Welcome into another edition of the Hang Time Podcast. Thank you, Smith, here in Atlanta. My main man, John Schumann's in New Jersey. John Hawks is behind the glass. Everybody back from a nice long weekend in Charlotte for All Star 2019. The NBA season slows for no one. I mean, we had a little break shoe, and now we're right back at it, less than two months away from the playoffs. It's a great time to dig into uh, week 20 of your NBA.com power rankings, kind of see how the league stands with just over 20 games remaining for everybody. I'm admiring your top five, shoot. I really am because this is a difficult time of year to make sense of who's doing what. Records are one thing, but momentum and and how a team play is playing coming off that all-star break when they've had that stretch of inactivity is really difficult to gauge. There were some rough outings in those first games back from the break. It, some teams, I'm sure, felt like they needed to go back on break for a couple of days just to kind of gather themselves. But Milwaukee holding strong at number one shoe, which I thought was was very interesting. What it should be interesting. Let's just yeah. get out. The the Bucks have been clearly the best team in the league this season. Yes. They have three fewer losses than any other team. They have the best point differential in the league by a wide margin. They're the only team in the top five on both ends of the floor. They are twenty they haven't lost two straight all season. Which and not remarkable. lost two straight games all season. And they are 23-2 and two since Christmas with Giannis Antetokounmpo in the lineup. 23-2. and two. Am I correct, too, that they have not lost to the same team? I think that's right. Twice yet this season? I think that's right. Why do I sense such a reluctance, then, of some people to, to legitimize what they're doing? I, I heard some people talking about this the other day. Um, on one of the broadcasts, there was kind of this, well, you know, We'll, they they have to show us in the playoffs, and they we got to see them do this. You know, once the the calendar turns, you know, in, in mid April. And I'm going usually when the metrics look like what the Bucks numbers do, that means you're legit. Yes, and there is that thing where oh, they didn't win a playoff series last year. How can you know? You know that holds t- people back. Like even if they just had gotten to the second round last year, it'd be a little people would be a little bit more comfortable, mm-hmm. right? Believing in them. But heck, go to the Warriors' first championship in uh, you know four years ago. They lost in the first round the year before, right. um, you know, and they got a new coach, and they changed their system, and they won sixty-seven games and won a championship. And the Bucks, you know, lost in the first round last year. Uh, got a new coach, new system, on pace, I think, to win more than let's see, they're on pace for I think sixty-two, sixty-three, something like that. Mm-hmm. But like I said, just the best team in the league. No, they're not. The Warriors are the are still the Warriors, and sure, sure. and but the Warriors haven't played like the best team in the league. But for a couple of yeah. you know yeah, a couple of uh, stretches of two or three weeks at a time, the Bucks you know from start to finish. I mean, I think the Bucks Bucks were the last team to lose a game this season. You know, like yeah. the you know they had the longest winning streak to start the season, and yeah. they haven't really let up. Shoot. You got the Warriors at two, Denver at three, Oklahoma City at four, and Toronto at five. All, like I said, solid picks as far as I'm concerned. I can't can't argue with the order at all. What I'm what I'm really curious about though, in terms of what you what you've seen and and what you think about is there was this notion that the East after the trade deadline was going to be full of these you know, this a top heavy powerhouse, you know, conference. And I haven't seen, they haven't looked like it on the hoof to me since then. Uh, The moves were great. And I thought they really, the top teams fortified themselves. But then I watched them. Boston is still uneven, even though they didn't make a big move. Um, Philly hasn't been what I thought they'd be. And then they haven't been out for a week, potentially, if not longer. Mark Gasol's transition in Toronto has been Solid, but hasn't blown me away. And even Nico Miritich hasn't had a colossal impact in terms of what's going on with the with the Bucks. Did we overstate? Did we overstate that what was going to happen? No, I think we're just looking at small sample sizes and basically all those mm-hmm. examples. And February is just a weird month. And like yeah. you know, you play for four. That you. You know, the first two weeks of February, you're kind of looking forward to the All-Star break. And then the last 10 days of February, you're sort of recovering from the All-Star break. And like you you started off saying, you know, when we first started that, you know, there's been some weird results. And 
that's been the case. I mean, the Bulls rank 30th in offense overall, and they rank first in offense in February. So that <laughs> tells you something. Now, I, I do think that, you know, we don't need to talk about the Bulls wrong, but I do think the Otto Porter addition has been important for them, and he just gives them a competent player at an important position, and that makes a big difference. Um, but like I said, weird results. The Raptors, you know, were fine until they – played a Sunday afternoon game without Kawhi Leonard and they got sort of crushed by the, the magic on Sunday. Mm -hmm. uh, the Sixers, hello, Joel Embiid is their most important <laughs> player, you know? And so you lose him for a couple of games and, and you don't look so great. And then the Celtics, <laughs> uh, so flaky, you know, just, uh, <laughs> just so flaky. It's so, you know, um, all season they, long. It's they've won, but season. they've, won the last six games they've played with Kyrie Irving and they've la lost the last four that they've played. They, they won the last six they played without, without Kyrie, right? Without yeah. Kyrie Irving. And they've lost the last four that they've played with him. But he's, but he feels great because he's, and the thing is he's been great. He's been fine. It's just yeah. that everybody else plays worse when he plays. Yeah. It's, it's, it's this thing. And Terry Rozier is, was downright awful the other day in their loss in Chicago, I think yeah. on Saturday. And so they haven't figured that out. Like it, it were, you know, they are 60 games into the season and haven't figured out how to play well at, you know, how to get everybody playing well at the same time. Um, should with, that, should that worry Brad Stevens or should that worry the guys on that roster? I mean, who should be more concerned? The guy, I mean, I'm assuming the players just think they can figure it out at some point that the playoffs will get here and they'll figure it out. But if well, I'm that's right, what Irving basically said yeah. the other day. He said, oh, I'm still here, so we don't have anything to worry about, which is whatever, you know. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, I think which is they, they, you know, they need to figure things out. I mean, uh, they play Toronto on Tuesday, in Toronto on Tuesday, which is just another test for them. You know, they, they can say, you know, that they've played well against the good teams, and for the most part they have. Let me just go back to it in a sec. They are seven and four against the other f four teams in the East top five. So they're fifth and they're seven and four against the Bucks, Raptors, Pacers, and Sixers. Right. But that's six and one at home and one and three on the road. So we'll see what they do at Toronto uh, on Tuesday. And if they stay in fifth place, well, heck, they're going to start the playoffs on the road. So they've benefited in those games from having a lot of them at home. Yeah, they uh... – and I apologize for the rugged voice here this week. It's, shoot, I, I don't know what hit me Sunday. We got knocked down by the post, the, the delayed post All Star Blues, I guess. So again, I apologize for the rugged voice. I'll try and soften it up. But it, it, Tuesday night is a big night, obviously on on TNT, the doubleheader, Boston and Toronto, as you mentioned, Denver and OKC. I'm still I'm still figuring out who the legitimate contenders are in terms of who I really think could challenge the Warriors. I know Chris Paul is very confident that the Rockets are right where they need to be, um, that they're the, they're the team that poses the biggest threat to the Warriors. And based on the results and the matchups, it, you know, I guess there would be some credence to what he says. Are we still sorting out who really is a threat amongst the rest of these teams outside of the Rockets? Yeah. Um, and I think, Denver, Oklahoma City on Tuesday will help us sort it out. I mean, Denver is only a game behind the Warriors, amazingly, uh, right now in the West, but the Warriors have a much easier schedule going forward. Mm -hmm. um, they actually have two games head-to-head, -head, but both of them are, are, at, are at Golden State. So Denver, Oklahoma City for second and third still remains a question in my mind, and then obviously Tuesday's game will go a long way in, in determining that. But, uh, yeah, the Rockets... They play. They've played well against tough competition. Um, their defense remains uh, an issue, although they've had two decent defensive games to come out of the, coming out of the break. And you know, I don't know. Maybe that win over Golden State will sort of change their calculus as far as how much of a load James Harden has to carry going forward. I mean, they won. They beat the best team, in, or they beat the best team in the West. Uh, I'm not going to say the best team in the league anymore. They beat the best team in the West uh, without him right? on Saturday. 
And prior to that, they blew a 19-point lead, lead against the Lakers, and he shot poorly in the fourth quarter, which has kind of been a story a little bit um, for most of the season, where he shoots best in the first quarter and shoots worst in the fourth. And that could have to do with how much how much of a load he's carrying. So they still have questions. Yes, it's it's impressive that they're three and zero against the Warriors, but there are still plenty of other teams. And as as the standings stand now, the bla- the team they're playing that they would play in the first round, uh, Portland, has looked really good coming out of the break uh, right. with their two big centers just sort of beating up the the Nets and the Sixers in their first two games. That that was a nice wrinkle, by the way, kind of an underrated move. Them picking up. Cantor. Um and Nurkic has been playing like a monster. So he's been he's been incredible. Like he they uh, I was at their their game in Brooklyn on Thursday and the two of the, those two guys just killed the Nets in the paint. Um Cantor has his issues defensively and Terry Stotts was basically the first to admit that uh when we were talking to him uh on Thursday. But man, he's a he's a really good offensive center around the basket. And Nurk, like you said, Nurk, Nurkic has been excellent. So they killed the Nets in the paint on Thursday, and then on Saturday against the Sixers, they they killed the Sixers on the glass. And obviously, Embiid's absence had a lot to do with that. But neither CJ nor CJ McCollum nor Damian Lillard had a big game in either of those games, and right, they still right. uh, got two. You know, they have a they're on a seven game trip, and they got still got two uh, comfortable wins in the first two games without the guards uh, really doing uh, a whole lot. Shu, I sense a, a level of arrogance on the part, and, and maybe it's warranted, you know, for a guy like Chris Paul to think the Rockets <laughs> are, are a threat from wherever they come from. But I sense that from several teams. But we talked about Boston. I sense that from Kyrie. Are, are they being a little presumptuous, assuming that they're going to be able to do exactly what they want from where they fit in the standings right now? I I tend to think that what Milwaukee's doing is the most important. To me, you always have to be out there gunning for the top spot in in your conference and overall to secure as much of a home court advantage in the postseason as absolutely possible. The only team to me that has built up the kind of cachet that says, hey, we can win from anywhere is the Warriors. All these other teams, to me, they need to be fighting tooth and nail for the best spot they can get in, in the standings just to to make sure they're not on the road, you know, for a critical game seven potentially in a series or, or, or dealing with a team they don't want to maybe earlier than, than they would want to in the postseason. And I don't, I don't get where this arrogance is coming from from all these other teams. Yeah, I mean, particularly in the West where, you know, all these teams have been much better at home than on the road. You just look at it, you know, their road records for even – Portland 12 and 15 on the road, Houston 14 and 16 on the road. Yeah. Utah 14 and 16 on the road. Like um so yeah, it matters. It definitely matters and we've seen it uh time and time again that it matters that there's only I mean even Denver's 15 and 14 away from home. I didn't it's yeah. not like they're um... Yeah. So like the Warriors we know can win anywhere. They yeah. are the Warriors. LeBron James we know can almost always gets a road win. Um, We're going to get to him eventually. We'll get to them shortly. Then they got to get in before we worry about it. Yeah, exactly. But other than that, yeah, I think, you know, there's not a a team out there that can say, hey, we're definitely going to win a game on the road against, you know, Team X. And like I said, Boston is in fifth. So, I mean, I I wouldn't be chirping (laughs) from that position at all. Um, the good thing is that the team that's in fourth is Philadelphia, who the Celtics have owned over the last. Mm-hmm. 16 or 17 months but yeah I, I i mean i can't wait to get this start i mean i'm i'm ready to fast forward to april <laughs> whatever it is 13th or whatever it is when the playoffs start and um easy i i'm ready to get it get it going easy shoot we got the bottom half of the standings on both sides it is still playing itself out let's let's go east first um and we'll get to LeBron. i want to Obviously, get to LeBron and the Lakers and what they're dealing with. But in the East, we've got Detroit. And to, and to me, there's a slight separation. You know, when you get to Boston at five, Brooklyn at six. Then you drop down to Detroit at seven, Charlotte at eight. Orlando, surprisingly, right there, two games back in the lost column to Charlotte. Um, then Miami, to me, doesn't really seem like they were they're the threat now that I thought they might be early in the year. They're in a bad place right now. Yeah, they're, they're, they're struggling right now. but. 
Washington's out. We're we're done with yeah. the Wizards. Yeah, I'm not I'm not even dealing with them anymore in that they've life. Put, they've put their fifty dollar deposit on their lottery <laughs> reservation. <laughs> what which of these teams, you know, in that between the Pistons, the Hornets, and the Magic gives you the most confidence right now that that, that they would finish in that seventh spot, which to me is much more important. You you're gonna get your lips bloodied either way. But have I wouldn't want to face the Bucks in round one if I, if I'm that one of those teams. First of all, let's not assume that the Nets are going to finish six because no, we've saw, I've, we've mentioned it. They have a a brutal schedule right down the stretch, and they've stumbled a little bit. Um, you know, escaping with a win in Charlotte mm-hmm. the other night that kept them in sixth place, right? With D'Angelo Russell basically going off in the last two minutes, so I wouldn't you know, say that they're in six safe or that they're in the playoffs safely just because of the, you know, the schedule that they have. Or, Orlando's played really well. They've won eight out of 10. Uh, their bench has been much better. You know, no offense to Mo Bamba, but extracting him from the rotation because of his injury has helped them. Um, at this point in his career, Ken Birch is a much more reliable backup center. And those minutes have been a you know, those bench minutes have been a huge difference for them over the last uh, nine games uh, since uh, Bamba's injury. Detroit has the number one offense over the last three weeks. Reggie Jackson, I think, is having the best stretch of his career, uh, playing really well. And Blake Griffin is playing really well. And Andre Drummond is playing really well. Those top three guys have led the way. And they got, a, you know, they got some good con- contributions off the bench, too, the other night in the – and a win in Miami, which was obviously a big win in this race. Yeah, Charlotte is up and down. Um, you know, it, it's 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 tough. Uh, they're just tough to pinpoint. They, you know, they're in, in regard to point differential. I think they're the best team out of this group, but they just keep losing close games, including that one against the Nets uh, the other night. So I, I think it is wide open with those four teams. Miami is still only uh, a game in the loss column behind the Hornets, but just just inspires no confidence at this point in the season with how bad they've been offensively, especially. You know, they got Dragic back uh, this weekend, but, you know, it's it's remains without him they were yeah they were they were kind yeah. of and, and it remains unclear just how good he can be uh right. coming off a however two month absence basically down the stretch so it's not the most inspiring group of uh of teams to talk about but it's encouraging that detroit and orlando in particular have played better over the last uh few weeks yeah and you know, and we'll see. Like with the flaky, uh, the funkiness of how the February results, we'll just see. You know, time will tell how how real the their improvement really is. Yeah. On the flip side, Shu, the Western Conference bottom half is fascinating. Um, <laughs> there's there's any number of scenarios that could play out. How far down do, should we go? Should we go all the way down to? Uh, I think we're looking at teams seven through eleven. Uh, uh, yeah, I was going to no, say. No, no offense to the Timberwolves, but uh, right. they haven't put together any kind of run at all. Right. It would have been nice if Robert Robert Covington had been healthy these last couple months, and maybe they're a much better team if he was. Mm-hmm. Um, but he's been out. I haven't heard any word of him being close to coming back. Yeah. And then they, they, you know, they lost Carl Anthony Towns for the first two games out of the break. So we're working up from the Timberwolves. The, the Lakers, at, you know, 29 and 30 as of right now. The Kings at ninth. The Clippers locked in at eight. You know, I don't care what anybody else says. Steve Ballmer's convinced his team's going to battle for for that eighth spot down to the wire. By the way, Spurs can I say something sliding. about that? I, yeah. I saw this this uh, article from my friend Sam, Sam Amick. Um, about Balmer saying, hey, we're going for the playoffs, right? Mm -hmm. And my first thought is, after the trade deadline, what does it matter what the owner wants to do? (laughs) Like, how is he, you know, like once the deadline is over and the roster is basically set, yeah, maybe there's a buyout candidate that he might be willing to pay for down the stretch. But once the, the deadline is passed, it's basically up to the coaches and the players just how well they play over the like the owner hat doesn't have owner can't say hey let's go for the playoffs and the players are going to be like oh yeah the owner wants to go no the players <laughs> want to win every game they play the coaches <laughs> want to win every game they play what the owner says it doesn't matter anymore right like in what what in what way does his, I don't know if I agree with his that. desire I mean, to make the playoffs affect 
the results on the floor. Well, I mean, I don't. I understand what you're saying. There's no, there's no nuts and bolts connection, but the tone that's set, I think, shoe in, in nobody likes to use the tanking word. Um, there is a tone that an owner can set in terms of being the head of the organization, the overall head of it, of how you operate, and what the emphasis is. We both know this. Like, if there's a team that has no intentions. Say you're in the 10th or 11th spot right now, but you really have no intentions of making the playoffs. If the owner is is not adamant that, hey, we're scrapping to the very end every night to try and get the eighth seed, it will manifest itself on the floor at some point. There will be things that could be done. Maybe. maybe. In, in some terms situations, of maybe. Who plays it and doesn't... who doesn't if it comes from on I that, you know, hey, we're not gonna we're not gonna expend the energy of this player or that player in the pursuit of winning games down the stretch of the last 20 some games. Come on now, let's not be naive. Hey, and- I watch major league and that owner did <laughs> not want that team to win games. And they, they made one heck of a run to reach the, the playoffs. And I think that's the, that's the a lesson to be I- learned for everybody. Yeah. Well, look, I, I think in the Western conference, there, there are some grudges shoe that I would say, exist what would be sweeter for the spurs clippers and kings and even the jazz you know they all want to keep the lakers out for like, sure they they will i mean and, and it 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 and comes I, to fruition i think there's about 10 guys on the pelicans the other night that really wanted to keep yeah. the lakers out of the playoffs too <laughs> yes i mean so i can see where it makes a difference even if it's just in spirit in terms of how you attack. I, that's what I, I sat with Bowman the other day down in our studios at NBA TV for a story that I wrote on NBA.com about the very thing, their stadium situation, which he's fired up about. And, uh, and you can check out the story at NBA.com. And also the fact that, you know, he's, he's talking about a culture shoe that they're not going to go away quietly just because they traded away Tobias Harris. And I, I know. And I, 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 I believe me, I, I I love the way they they're playing. You know, they got they got uh, yeah. hammered hammered on Sunday in Denver, but I I've said it right here that I love the way that they played and Doc Rivers has done a great job. I just don't see how like what the owner thinks at this point in the season really matters much. All right, well, I think I think whether he could have said he could have said nothing about the subject to mm-hmm. you and to Sam, and they would still that the that that coaching staff and those players would still be. Um, trying to get there. Sure. Yeah, you're, I mean, you're right in, in theory that even when an organization knows they're dead in the water, coaches and players are going out every night trying to win. That Absolutely. That's the competitor. It's also why I hate, question, I hate questions about from the media to coaches and players about, oh, do you really want to win? Or, oh, isn't it good that, you know, like that, you know, just talking about the desire to win games, like that desire is always – always there oh, i thought you were gonna say uh, you hate questions team. about people's mindset if i hear that <laughs> one more time like no seriously when did that yeah. become a thing by the way let's go off on a tangent when did that become this thing where it's like well tell me about what was your mindset when you did and I, i've heard it so much recently i'm thinking is this no, I, yeah i mean it's just a weirder way to say like why did you make this decision you know or yeah. why do you, did you do this but but let's the let's get back and let's talk about the spirit anyway who have uh, lost six of the first seven games on the rodeo trip. Disastrous. Pop uh, slapping Patrick. himself, everything. Defense has been awful. Absolutely Made the Knicks look like a playoff team awful. almost. That was the Knicks. That was the Knicks' most efficient scoring game on Sunday in more than almost five years, basically since oh March God. of 2014, when they had wow. Raymond Felton uh, playing point guard. Wow. And. Three of the other opponents that they played on this trip have had a one of their five best offensive games of the season against the Spurs on this trip. The trip ends in Brooklyn uh, Monday night, by the way. They, the Spurs proved my point, though. Shoot, there couldn't be there couldn't be a team or an organization more focused on the process of winning. Nobody's done it better than them over the past twenty years in the NBA. And even they can't. You know, sometimes you are what your components say you are. And on a given night, if the, if it's not clicking and you just don't have it, you get smoked. That's just the nature of this beast. No matter how much your intent is to do something, the, the Spurs are just not a – they're not a, a high-quality team. 
And another team, 22 and 7 at home, 11 and 21 on yeah. the road. That's why I, the, one of my things I, I write a lot is a road win is a good win. It doesn't matter who the opponent is. If you get a win on the road, take it and, and be happy with it, uh, even if it's ugly, even if it's against a bad team. And especially in a playoff, in a tight playoff race, road wins are absolutely critical. So, what does the shoe meter tell you about the Lakers' chances of getting into the playoffs? Like, do they have the math <laughs> on their side, or no? Is there enough real estate in the season left for them to make up this ground? Can they get a? Can they peel off four or five wins in a row and, and everything? Well, all right. them? Here's here's a question for you. When all do you right. think was the last time the Lakers won two games in a row? <laughs> Before 2019 started. No. Okay. Uh, January is January 15 and 17. So that was during the LeBron absence. Yes. When was the last time you think they they won three games in a row? I have no idea. They won four in a, the last time they won three in a row was right after Thanksgiving. They won yeah. four in a row from November 29th through December 5th. Right. So technically, there is enough games. There are enough games left uh, for them to catch the Clippers mm-hmm. uh, or the Kings, should the Kings pass the Clippers in the in the meantime. Mm-hmm. Um, and they do have some head-to-head matchups against those teams. Let me just look at it. Um, they play uh, the Clippers twice more, the Kings once more. They do not play the Spurs anymore if the Spurs are the team to fall out. Right. But before we can believe in LeBron – LeBron's ability to take this team to the playoffs. I'd like to see them win more than two games in a row <laughs> for, you know, at some point, any point. Because we're operating on the fumes of that. I mean, that's yeah, the basis like, of our confidence, right? Is that LeBron will do yeah, LeBron I mean, things and they make the playoffs. And they have an opportunity. They play. All right. So they play their next five games are at Memphis mm-hmm. uh, and against New, against New Orleans. So that's an opportunity. It should be two wins in a row. Then they play the Bucks. And they play at Phoenix, and then they have uh, a homestand with the Clippers, Nuggets, and Celtics. Like, where are they going to be after those six, seven games? I like, see no guarantees for them anywhere on this. No, game. like it's, Not it's zero. Yeah, I mean they've been. I mean I keep using this word, but they've been flaky as <laughs> as as any team in the league. They've had too know? many disastrous performances. Their offense is for not me to, good. Yeah, for me to believe that there's any guarantees on the roster. So let me let me ask you, let me ask this a different way. We're going to have a choose-your-own-adventure question. What's more beneficial to the Lakers' bottom line right now, making or not making the playoffs? And in each scenario, there's going to be a casualty. If you don't make the playoffs, there's a casualty. If you make the playoffs, something will have had to have you know, happen or something has to give. What's the casualty on each side shoe if you make it and if you don't? Uh, what do you mean? Like, I mean, because if you make it, that means LeBron, either LeBron goes bananas and, and plays at a galactic level and or somebody else steps up, uh, you know, Lonzo Ball comes back and gives you a boost. There has to be something that there's a casualty, you know, for you to, to get to the point where you get in if you're the Lakers, be it another team, you know, be it the Clippers, the the Kings, the Spurs, somebody's a casualty if you get if the Lakers get in. If they don't get in, there's going to be a casualty after that. Is it Luke Walton? Is it? Oh, uh, you know, I mean, well, well I mean, I I I understand that part, that mm-hmm. half of the question, a lot easier. And yeah, maybe it's Luke Walton. Although I don't like to speculate on on that kind of stuff. We, but you would be crazy not to speculate. You on this? Come on. You hear chatter yeah. in that in that regard, obviously. Um, I mean, I don't think it matters like either way, really. Like if they Mm -hmm. lose in the first round or they don't make the playoffs, I don't know necessarily know if Luke Walton's job is more safe in either, uh, in either way, because Mm -hmm. it's all about it. I don't want to say it's all about, but a lot of it is what LeBron thinks of the people around him. If LeBron wants Luke Walton to keep coaching, I think Luke Walton's going to keep coaching. And if LeBron likes the players around him, then those some of those players will stay. If he doesn't, obviously, obviously they have whether they make the playoffs or not. This roster, they're not satisfied with this roster. Right. Like, there's nothing that I don't think there's anything that can happen in the next two and a half months that will change their desire to go get 
Anthony trade for Anthony Davis in the summer, right? Mm-hmm. Not nothing. Like, and maybe it only helps, you know, if if certain players play play better. Brandon Ingram, I think, in particular, maybe that helps um, their ability to make the trades that they want to make. But I don't think the results in the next few m- months will affect their desire to. You think they? You think they're trying to obviously? Yeah. In the summer. Yeah. Sure. Sure. All right. Well, we'll, we'll see. Because this curious. is not like fighting for the eighth spot, whether it's finishing eighth or finishing ninth, like that's not where they want to be. Obviously, right. that's just right. not like they want to be in the one or two conversation in the Western Conference, not the eight or nine conversation in the Western right. Conference. Good luck with that. Yeah. I, you know, it, it takes they, they got a lot of mountain to climb um, for this sure. summer. Either for sure. Way. And with LeBron only getting older. Yeah. Either way. Interesting. Interesting. It's your perspective, as always, John Schumann. Interesting. I don't agree with it all the time. I mean, I know we argue a lot, but you know, that's it's par for the course here on the Hangtime Podcast. <laughs> um, be sure to read the full NBA dot com power rankings at NBA. And offer com. offer any suggestions. Power. We've reached the point in the season where <laughs> I've I could use suggestions on things to write about teams like 23 through uh, 30. Like, so if you got something to say about the Mavs, you know, something that I should look into regarding the, uh, the Grizzlies or the Bulls, just, uh, you know, send your suggestions. Please. You haven't, you've, you've gotten away from your one word. Um, <laughs> one word. Well, haven't you gotten, yeah. Did you get some reprimand for that or some blowback from that? Um, I guess you're no longer doing yeah, the there, one word. It was three words. It was a, <laughs> I think it was – I forget what team it was about, but the, the words were this team stinks. And, and that was a long time ago. Nice. I'll make sure to check that out. Um, we'll be back on Thursday with an up, another episode. Hopefully I'll uh, – the the honey, tea, and lemon will have worked wonders for me, Shu. Either that or spending a night with Jerry Greenberg on Crunch Time Wednesday on NBA TV. One of the two will probably snap me back into uh, late season mode as we get – through the stretch run of this NBA season. Um, be sure to subscribe to Hang Time on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts for new episodes all season long. Please leave a review. We will see you right here next time on the Hang Time Podcast. On the Hang Time Podcast.